So it's called Our Cosmo, and it was developed by myself in collaboration with doctors Andrea Lenko, Ming Li, and Yu Gang Wang at La Trobe Uni. Uh, who here has worked with cosmic microwave background data before? Many people? Nobody? No? Maybe some. Okay. Uh, well, it's, it's remnant electromagnetic radiation from about 14 billion years ago. Uh, it's thought of as like a, a baby photo of the early universe. And it tells us a lot about the structure of the universe and its evolution over time. It was discovered in 1964 by a couple of Bell Labs physicists and considered 10 years later when they produced the first full sky map, considered to be the dawn of precision cosmology, uh, mainly because it offered many finer constraints on lots of cosmological parameters. For example, the um, cosmological constant, which describes the global geometry of the universe. and uh, also, it provided evidence for the Big Bang Theory and, for example, Einstein's cosmological principle. Einstein's cosmological principle is that the universe is roughly the same no matter where you are in it or which direction you're looking in, at least on large distance scales. So, in other words, it's, it's homogenous and isotropic in some sense. Uh, yeah, so there's ongoing investigations into especially finer scale anisotropies in the CMB. And uh, we're getting data with increasing resolution, sort of exponentially increasing resolution. And this data is located on an Earth-centered sphere. Uh, the sphere is of radius about 46 billion light years. Um, even though the light is 14 billion years old, space has been increasing during that time. So it's 46 billion light year radius sphere. It can be thought of as a random field. and. Yeah, like I said before, maybe homogeneous and isotropic. A random field is, is like a, a scalar field, except the scalars are random variables. It's a function associating a random variable to points in space. Typically, this data is stored in flexible image transport system files, which is standard for astronomical data, and delivered using Helpix data structure. Helpix is the hierarchical equal area isolatitude pixelation of the sphere. Um, it's a self-similar refinable mesh. So you start off with, basically that means you start off with 12 base pixels numbered, and then you can divide them up into smaller parts. And as you continue to refine like this, the pixels all have equal area. Um, so that covers hierarchical and equal area. But also the pixel centers lie on isolatitude rings, a relatively small number of isolatitude rings. And which is useful if you're calculating spherical harmonics because the Legendre functions just depend on latitude. So you don't have to evaluate them, and that they're quite slow. You don't have to evaluate as many. Uh, current generation of maps are composed of about 12 million pixels or 50 million pixels, depending on the resolution. And the pixels contain temperature data, polarization data, and other, other stuff. So just a quick demonstration of something our Cosmo can do. We can visualize Helpix pixel uh, boundaries. So it was used to produce those plots from the last slide. This uses RGL package to interface with OpenGL, and it creates these great 3D interactive graphics that can be exported using NIDAR to HTML and embedded in a web page, and they remain interactive in the web page. So what I've done is plotted the base pixels in color and then a higher resolution pixel boundaries over that, and you can see that they're evenly spread about the sphere pretty much. So if you want to take a uniform, approximately uniform sample of the pixels uh, of locations on the sphere, all you have to do is take a simple random sample of pixel indices, which is convenient. Other pixelations of the sphere are more concentrated in the polar regions, for example. Not all of them, but yeah. Can I get back? Yeah. All right. The current generation of maps produced by the European Space Agency, hosted by Caltech and NASA at this link. You can find that link and other links at the Arcosmo GitHub. Um, there's various foreground separation methods which remove interference from the Milky Way galaxy and stuff, and they're just listed here. Existing software is in C and C++ and these other languages listed here. Um, particularly the Python one is pretty good and the documentation is really good. I found the documentation for the C and C++ software to be pretty impenetrable. <laughs> uh, with R, there's uh, the package fits.io for reading in data from fits files. And for the particular maps that I had to read, it was taking 40 minutes to read the maps in. They're only about 300 megabytes and it would crash my computer. It's still, it's like 
50 million pixel, uh, 50 million rows and two columns. Uh, but something about it just didn't agree with with uh, reading it all into R's memory using FITS.io, I guess. And there's a couple of other packages for generalized working with astronomical data. But R Cosmo is the first for um, analysis of the CMB. And that's the GitHub link there. We want to make these CMB computations accessible to all our users by abstractifying the efficient handling and analysis of the data and vastly improve upon previous means for importing data. We, we achieved that with the, I'll show you in a moment. Uh, we've used C and C++ where necessary through RCPP to speed things up. So importing, he'll pick structured data from FITS files. Previously, like I said, you'd use this code here with FITS.io library. This read fix function reads this map, which is, um, I'm not going to run it because it will take 40 minutes and then crash my computer. <laughs> but this one using our Cosmo is just like five seconds and it creates a, an object which is called a CMB data frame. It's basically just a data frame with a few extra attributes for um, those attributes are taken from the FITS file that you're using and they're just, just they're metadata describing the, the map that you're interested in. It prints like a tibble uh, and you can see that down the bottom there it's got 50 million rows and there's I for intensity, which is the temperature, I guess, and uh, T mask, which is related to the foreground separation. Okay, so maybe you don't want to read it all in to memory because it's a huge data set. So instead we've got this option using this CMB read fits function with uh, setting the parameter m map equals true. You can just maintain a pointer to the location of the data in a file and then without actually reading it in, just keep track of where you're looking at, where you're pointing at. So that's created this map object. And we can take a uniform sample of a million pixels from the file that just takes a couple of seconds. Most of the time is spent plotting it. Um, and there we have a nice 3D interactive map of the CMB that we can zoom in on. And you can see that it's kind of uniformly distributed points, which are the pixel centers and colored according to temperature. We can add coordinates to this quite easily. Uh, if I do that, it's just going to add spherical coordinates and then you get the theta and phi columns. Uh, we can change to Cartesian coordinates easily. And now we're going to get x, y, and z in place of theta and phi. OK, going back to my slides. So we've just seen converting between ordering schemes and coordinate schemes. Um, not ordering schemes. Ordering schemes are a, a feature of heel picks. You can have various ordering schemes, but I'm not going to get into that. Also, subsetting and combining data. So you might not want to read, you might want to say, okay, I don't want to just take a uniform sample. I want to read in some other interesting area from the file. So this code here is going to read in a spherical annular area here and this non-convex star-shaped polygon uh, and then plot it against a low resolution background. So I'm just really impressed by how quick it is. And part of how quick it is is because the MMAP package that we rely on is really fast. Okay, uh, where was I? Back to the slides. Once you've got your data in R, you want to do some statistical analysis um, and maybe some geometrical stuff. So we've got lots of functions for that and aim to add lots more. That, that was originally the goal to provide statistical analysis functions. Uh, it turned out to be a huge task just dealing with everything up to that point. <laughs> um, the statistical methods we have so far are especially empirical covariance function estimation um, and a couple of other things. So I'll just I'll demonstrate empirical covariance function estimation. First, we're going to take a sample of 100,000 points from the memory mapped um, file, then pass it to this function covcmb, which has maximum distance set to 0 0.03. So that would be the distance on a unit sphere. And because this sphere is about 46 billion light years in radius, um, it translates to around a billion light years distance. You don't really need anything more than that um, for covariance. So we're looking at covariance between random variables separated in space, and that's going to go down as distance increases. And the number of bins here is set to 100. Um, so it can take a while because it's calculating the covariance between each pair of random variables, and there's 100,000 of those. Usually not this long, though. This is what I was terrified about. <laughs> oh, here we go. Great. 
Okay. So there's the empirical correlation. Um, if you divide by the variance, we can have a look at the object that it produces. You can see distance and covariance. Um, it treats it, so it treats it like an isotropic random field um, and then places data points into spherical annular bins and works a lot like a histogram. So those distances are the distances to the center of the bins in something like a histogram on the sphere. Uh, the first one has a lot more points here, 100,000, and that's because it's variance, and the other ones all have roughly the same amount of points because we've made sure that they have equal area. Okay, uh, yeah. Our Cosmo currently has about 60 functions, um, and we've got many unit tests implemented. So for continuing development, if we, if we break something, then hopefully... This uses the test that package, so in our studio, if you're using test that, you can just control shift T and then implement all your unit tests, which some people have probably heard of. So it's just going to run all those tests. Um, 350 probably isn't a huge number, but it's a start. And uh, yeah, please look at the GitHub. Um, the link is on the handouts as well, and there is a vignette with a good tutorial there. And you could look at the code there and give feedback too. That would be great. Or if you feel like working on it, that would be great too. Um, where to next? We want to wrap functions from the C and C++ Helpix libraries. Like I said, I found the documentation there to be really hard to read. I think that's standard for C, C++ documentation maybe. And um, we want to improve our documentation and get on CRAN and um, add more stats methods like anisotropic imperial covariance estimation. Special thanks to Hadley Wickham's books on advanced R and R packages. Um, they really helped along the way. And these great packages, NMAP for memory mapping that I mentioned, RCPP, RGL for OpenGL integration, and DevTools also by Hadley Wickham. For, uh, that includes TestThat and various other developer tools. Yep, that's it. Thanks. <laughs> Actually, because the pixels are roughly equiarial and um, the Helpix pixels are distributed fairly evenly across the sphere, so they're not concentrated in the polar regions, um, taking a uniform sample of locations on the sphere was just, uh, we just had to take a simple random sample using R's sample function of the pixel indices. So that was really easy, just because it's in Helpix structure. So there's a couple of advantages to the Helpix structure like that. Thanks. How are you going to publish it? Uh, what journal will be interested? Yeah, we're looking at the R journal. We're looking at a couple of journals, not not a hundred percent. The R journal and um, yeah, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I suppose you do have. The, the, one of the things I've had difficulty with is similar similar projects that are not data based, that are not analysis of data. Yeah. Is that it's not statistics, and so neither R journal nor our stats that we're interested. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Maybe we'll add some more statistics and then publish. <laughs> yeah. Just be careful when you carry those down when it's positive definition. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Thanks. Do you have any other questions? Oh, okay. Thanks. <laughs>